G'day everyone, it's Billy here from uh, West Australia, guys. I just found another bobtail lizard, guys, for another tick on it. See the tick just behind its ear? So I wasn't really happy with the video I did yesterday about the tick removal, guys. So I found this other one. You can just see that tick right behind its ear. Sometimes they go right inside the ear. There. So a bush tick, just right beside the entrance to the ear, guys. So I just found this bobtail in my yard. I thought I'd do another video, guys, to just show you how I removed the ticks. This one I could easily remove just with my, with my fingers. So, there you go, sorry. So what I could use is tweezers, Swiss Army knife tweezers. I could easily take that out. So I'm just gonna. All right, guys. Trying to get a good shot, fellas. All right, so I'm just going to. My magpie kind of gets jealous, guys. Nippa. Here he goes. Excuse my fingers, guys. So it's really easy, guys. You just got to get the It's a bit hard when I'm filming this by myself, fellas. So I'm just going to pull out my fingers. Alright, here we go. So, uh, so I just wasn't a very good video fellas but basically I just used my fingers and that's what the bush tick looks like and it's basically dead now because I've squeezed squeezed it with my fingers And also, guys, I'll just show you this one, a little baby one I just found as well. Just a little baby bobtail lizard. And they do hurt if they bite. Really, really strong bite. It's like getting your fingers caught in a in a metal vice. And they do draw blood sometimes. 
But yeah, it's a beautiful little baby bobtail. I don't know, probably about six months old, possibly. Um, so anyway, guys, we'll go for a bit of a walk and see if there's any other bobtails around my yard. So what I'm doing today, guys, is planting some nice fruit trees. So I'm digging holes. This ground's really, really like concrete. So digging some deep holes and planting some nice fruit trees, nectarine trees and plum trees and so forth. Doing a bit of tidying up around the yard. I can see a bobtail. So I've got a few bobtails. Here's one here. See another one. And my, that's my pet magpie, guys, and he just gets jealous when I pick them up. But this one's got no ticks in it. There's another one over here, the baby. Oh, he's gone. So as I said yesterday, guys, got plenty of places for them to live. Heaps of hollow logs. I can see another one. I've got a fair few guys, 15 to 20. They live underneath all these pallets, guys. So I'm basically just redoing a video I did yesterday. I wasn't happy with it, guys. My vegetable garden. So this is all new trees that I've just done, growing trees to plant at my mate's farm. This is a fruit tree right here I planted yesterday. A beautiful Louisa plum. All my onions and other trees I'm growing guys. Salad onions, cooking onions, white red onions. Here's another fruit tree I just planted yesterday as well. So I spent about $350, guys, on some fruit trees the other day. This is a beautiful Arctic rose nectarine. Vegetables I'm growing, spinach and chard. Broad beans, it's one of my, my beautiful lemon tree. I, I used to get snakes in here, mate, but I've made it all completely snake proof. They can't get in anymore. So, this is my worm farms. So, all this beautiful worm farm mulch I'm using for my fruit trees at the moment. All these lemons I'm going to be cutting up into slices and making. I can come a can butcher or whatever it's called I, I don't, I've never done it before fellas so just learning stuff all the time to drink can or whatever it's called I don't know more trees I'm growing here They're just starting to come up oh, g'day Carla thanks for joining me see a few more bobtails guys so this, the snakes used to get under here. So that fence there. So the snakes used to get underneath this fence, but I've made it all snake proof now. There's a couple of bobtails up here, guys. You can see the bobtail tracks. So it's all bobtail tracks. There's one there. A monitor lizard. Just remember, guys, any of you guys who are overseas, I don't want to upset anyone, but many, many reptiles get smuggled overseas. So, the, uh, especially the bobtail lizard, what I've just shown you, it's one of the most smuggled reptiles in, in Australia. It gets smuggled overseas 
from Eastern European people, Asian people, um, and it sells for around four to five thousand US dollars just for one bobtail lizard, guys. Here's another little baby one, basically. Thanks, Carla. Yeah, no, it's going to be a paradise one day. It's getting there. Here's another beautiful, this is my peach tree. And these bags here, guys, are full of cat and dog manure and heaps of worms. Oops. So nip off my magpie gets jealous. He doesn't hurt the bobtails. He spots them on the tail. You can see something in the sky, possibly. Maybe an eagle. See how he's looking up. That's a warning sign for a magpie. So when do they do that? That's a warning sign. So here's a, that one there, guys. Beautiful. Reptile. So, these have been in my yard for a long time, guys. So, I don't know, they might have just started off with a pair, possibly. But, like I say, guys, everywhere there's beautiful wooden logs that they can sleep in. Uh, uh, ah, Be naughty. It was like a little kid. It's about 18 months old. Come on. It's a beautiful magpie, guys. Beautiful whistle and so forth. And it's my cat Beauty. My cat doesn't hurt any of my my magpies. Beauty. My cat, so the cat doesn't do any harm to the reptiles but she has does catch birds occasionally unfortunately I hate it when they when the cat does that so she's around 12 years old beauty what's 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 and and nipper sorry Sorry guys. So my cat's, well my cat beauty doesn't, is kind of friendly with my magpie, which is good, but I'm more worried about the feral cat I've got. Yucky, Yucky's kind of uh, wants to get the magpie. So I'm training my cat Yucky not to hurt my magpie at the moment. So anyway guys, we'll keep going. And all this is beautiful pig face. This pig face, like I said yesterday, will cover this whole white sandy area in the next six months so it'll be like a big thick grass beautiful flowers I'll show you some pig face guys in flower in a minute so here yeah, basically today I'm just planting fruit trees guys so right here I showed you this yesterday guys this is an area where a bobtail might be sleeping no it's warm right now, so they're all out. Look at this one here. This is a beautiful one. That's a beautiful bobtail, that one. So he's sleeping on that rock, basically, just lapping up the warmth. So that's what they do in the mornings. They'll sit on these rocks or on the tin or on the sand. And just to try and get nice and warm because they're a cold-blooded animal and they need the warmth to get going in the mornings and the bobtail lizards active all year round guys even in winter where I come from but it doesn't come out when it's cold but if the sun's shining it'll come out in some bake just to, to warm up but that one there's a beautiful looking bobtail that one g'day forte Phil I got you, saw your message, Phil. I'm thinking I hope you're going all right, mate. I'll reply soon about you struggling and that. I know what it's like, mate. 
but at least you've got beautiful kids, mate. That's the main thing. It'll all pay off one day. So I'll get a bit closer, guys. I've actually seen these bobtails climb fences as well, guys. Like about six foot fences. Like it's pretty amazing. Not the fences like this, but if there's wire, like a wire fence, I've seen them climb actual wire fence. And when they get to the top, they just drop. blue tongue so that's what we call them a blue tongue lizard in where I come from West Australia guys we'll have a look underneath this tin there might be a little one down here no but that hole there guys they sleep under there and they actually sleep underneath this sand they hibernate under there as well because underneath all this sand there's all logs and tree branches like I said yesterday, guys, I, it's like um, a term they use in Germany when they're growing vegetables. And that, uh, they, I don't know, I forget what it's called now, but basically they just put heaps and heaps of logs underneath the ground and they cover all the logs in sand. Oh, I forget what it's called for dollars, unfortunately. But yep. But yeah, that's a beautiful one there. So they come in all different colours. And I'm always checking the ears, that's where the ticks usually are in the ears. But also in the scales as well. Everywhere, behind the legs. And when they give birth to guys, they give birth to live litter, so they don't lay eggs. The bobtails are actually, they give birth to a live litter. I've never actually seen the really, really tiny babies, but only the ones that are around probably three to six months, three to six months old. But the babies are, you know, basically from my knuckle, the top knuckle to the end of my little finger there, long. And these little guitars are going to be bird boxes, guys, with this jacaranda tree scene. Here's another bobtail. No, that one's got no ticks in it. And like I say guys, everywhere underneath the tin they live in that little thing there, underneath all these concrete slabs. I've got sawdust in there, so they live underneath the concrete slabs, underneath that old satellite dish. Yeah, thanks Carla. The rubbish dump finds, they're nothing special, but I've got to actually take them down today because I've got a big storm. So we've got a big storm coming tomorrow guys, so I'll take them down so they get too loud. But yeah, this is a beautiful jacaranda tree, a native of Brazil. Very, very common in Australia. And also America, California and so forth. Nice beauty. Beauty. <laughs> Oh, 
Not underneath wheelbarrows. So, all underneath these railway sleepers they live. It's not just the bobtails, guys. We've got heaps and heaps of frogs and tadpoles. All different species, about five to seven different species of frogs. I've got burrowing frogs and frogs what live in water, frogs what live under the sandy soil. So this area too, I created just, sorry, this area as well, guys, I created just for the burrowing frogs. Heaps and heaps of little lizards. Here's one here. Oh, he's gone. But yep, there's, look, there's a frog hole right here, guys. Right, there, that's a frog hole. So that's a burrowing frog. So the burrowing frogs don't live in water, they create their tadpoles underneath the moist white sand. And some frogs also give birth to live frogs as well, not tadpoles. So, all different species, guys. So the bobtail here having a sleep now. It's having a sleep. It's nice when you see them sleeping. And heaps and heaps of logs, fellas. And more trees we've got growing here, some beautiful native species. In my yard, they're gonna be uh, beautiful banks use. And there's a case use. Um, unsure what this one is, it might be a little pine tree coming up. All different species, Melly Lucas and tea trees and native grasses. So this is what saves me guys, my from my you know, when I struggle, anxiety and all that kind of stuff, my garden. Heaps of beautiful logs. And like I say, ponds. So all the logs are for the geckos and lizards. That's where my beautiful Dalmatians buried there, Cindy. Banjo. My old dog Banjo is going to be, get buried here eventually in this pond. So when Banjo dies, I'm going to remove the... There's a big plastic square insert in here, guys. It's really deep, so I'm going to remove that and Banjo is going to get buried here. There's another pond right here. Full of tadpoles. Can't see any frogs at the moment, but they're in there, all underneath all the rocks and the logs. And also, guys, we've also got heaps of our uh, brick. Insect homes, I just a little lizard then, but they're all for moths and butterflies or prey mantis and you know, or the insects to make the nests in. There's another one just down here from there. So all, all the logs and rocks and all the bricks, everything is just found at local rubbish dumps, guys. Yeah, it is windy. I hope there's no wind noise, Phil. So we've got a big storm coming through tomorrow morning.
so yeah guys that's uh, basically it you know I just thought I'd do a video and show you how I removed the bobtail lizard ears the ticks and so forth in this area here is my new little rockery what I've just done and I gonna be a chicken pen here eventually underneath my beautiful Takasasti tree in the next couple of days be raking so all these flowers are coming off the Takasasti tree and it's beautiful compost so yeah that's what I'm doing today guys is doing my fruit planting my beautiful couple of fruit trees these potatoes this is a sweet potato garden um, so that I won't be planting any sweet potatoes here for a, probably a couple more months guys I'll show you my sweet potatoes so in here guys some see them sitting here this is in one of my spare rooms so they're all sweet potatoes I've just set up in the last week or so in jars in water and then uh, that's how you do it guys in jars of water and all the leaves start sprouting off the top of the sweet potatoes the slips and then you just take the slips off the sweet potatoes and plant them in the ground and here's another beautiful bobtail it's another beautiful one here See if it's got any ticks in it, guys. No, they're pretty well all done. But one thing too, guys, it's amazing how the ticks come back. They must be everywhere. So I take them off, and you can, another month or so, you'll see them back in the ears again. And I do check my dogs as well. Um, but also under here, guys, the, the um, underneath these big wooden round telecom. Uh, copper coil things. There's bobtails living under there, there as well. Um, but also, so in the next couple of days, we're removing those and going to be planting fruit trees in there as well. So there's big tractor tires. So I've got to actually remove the tractor tires, possibly, and I'll be planting some nice fruit trees in there. So anyway guys, so this is just my summer vegetable garden. It's all a bit messy at the moment, but this is where I grow all my watermelons and pumpkins and everything else. And there's my beautiful Takasasi tree. Just done a I'll put a link to that tree in the video description later, guys. And they're bat boxes. I haven't seen any bats live in those boxes yet, maybe, but so also those guitars you saw previously, hopefully we might get some bats living in those. I'll be going up the trees. Got heaps of beautiful olives. Big olive tree up there as well, next to the Tekazasi tree. And like I say, this is all going to be... I did a video the other day, guys, on making this... Um, making this sweet potato garden. So I've got woolen blankets in here. Um, coconut fibre, the carpet underlay. So check out that video, guys. It's, I still haven't finished this. Here's the coconut fibre underlay here. So once again, it's all rubbish dump finds as well, guys. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm still working on this garden to get it nice and ready for my sweet potatoes. So anyway, guys, see yeah, up. So I'm just tidying up, doing a bit of rearranging. And that rainwater tank over there, that red one, is that stuffed. So hopefully soon I'll get a new rainwater tank when I can afford it. And that's a beautiful big Port Jackson fig tree. That keeps my house nice and cool during summer. But alright fellas, really, really appreciate it though. I just thought I'd do another video. And just before I go guys, I'll show you this pig face in flower. The beautiful pig face in flower. So I've got, it's a succulent. So here's one here, nice one. Here's another native succulent. I don't know what it's called, this one, but and another beautiful one here. So all the frogs and stuff live under here. So heaps of frog ponds around my yard. All my old parsley and coriander and all that. And here's a 
got some outdoor aquariums with tadpoles in them. See the tadpoles? This one just there in the corner there. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's just there. Oh no, the the big tree doesn't hurt my garden. Oh, the storm's probably coming in tomorrow afternoon, I'd say. I've missed a few comments, sorry guys. It's hard to look at them when you're talking. Anyway guys, that pig face with all the white sand, what you just saw, this is eventually what it's going to be like. So a beautiful big thick layer of pig face and all the bolt-tailed lizards will live underneath it. And it's just starting to come into flower. And those flowers you can eat, they taste like our strawberries. And also the this leaf here is really good for headaches and migraines. And it's full of water. Sorry my fingernails guys, I haven't got the best fingernails from years of biting them. Thanks sorry. <laughs> All the crap that's happened to me guys, but oh but yeah, it's really good for headaches and migraines and so forth. And like I say, this little flower here is uh, tastes like strawberries, bush tucker. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Carl. It's, it's getting beautiful. It's going to be a paradise one day. I just want to create a beautiful big, big canopy in my yard. And these are all vegetables. I've got vegetables everywhere, guys. Beetroots and carrots. So any guys out there trying to grow your own vegetables? That's a little baby bog tail there, guys. Oops. I've got this phone attached to a tripod, guys, so it's a bit hard to film. This is a beautiful one here. So they come in all different types of patterns and colours. And they're very, very docile, guys. That's why they're so popular with the smuggling. They're so easy to capture. You can just walk up to them and basically pick them up. And uh, yeah, I'll put some really good links below to bobtail smuggling, guys. But anyway, most Australian reptiles that you see in the overseas pet mar markets for sale in Europe and England and America, you know, most of those have been smuggled. Australia guys it's not just the reptiles it's all the beautiful birds and the cockatoos they smuggle the eggs in their pockets and send them in postal tubes so if you are in Australia in the country guys just keep an eye out if you see foreigners walking in the bush like Eastern European people Asian people report them get the number plates guys and report them because uh you know, most of these reptiles what get smuggled overseas end up dying in the postal tubes in their pockets and so forth, guys. I'm pretty passionate about it. And also, guys, one more thing too, where I come from, 85% of these bobtails have been wiped out due to being run over by cars um, on, the, on the roads because they lay on the concrete, or sorry, on the bitumen roads and cars just run over them. And also, unfortunately, people deliberately run over them too. Um, but 85% of the bobtail populations in Western Australia and all, all other parts in Australia, Southern Australia, have been wiped out due to being, being run over by, by cars and also smuggling, but mainly 
by getting run over by cars. And just some onions I'm growing here, guys. So it's all protected from my magpie, so my magpie doesn't rip it up. So yeah, no, it's a beautiful paradise my garden is, guys. My apricot tree here, it's all coming into flower. So, right now, I'm, I'm probably going to have around 10 beautiful fruit trees. So it's good to, I'm just trying to be self-sufficient, guys. And here, there's more hollow logs there for bobtails and so forth to live in. And before I go, guys, I'll just show you where my aquaponics is going to be set up. Some beautiful broccoli. Chinese broccoli. So it's a type of orange. It's a grafting. And so eventually, too, guys, I'm going to have aquaponics for growing my own vegetables. And also for freshwater crayfish, uh, yabbies, you know. So right here, sorry guys, what am I doing? So right here, fellas, that's going to be one area for my aquaponics. Um, and maybe where this rainwater tank is, it's going to be some of those IBC containers, probably two IBC or three IBC containers here where that rainwater tank is and a smaller rainwater tank. And that's all for my washing machine, recycling water, my grey water. Right there. And also before I go to you guys right here, I'm going to today building a beautiful um, geranium garden so this is like an old I don't know front-end loader or something like that I don't know what, what it is but it's off a forklift or something a container a bucket so I'm going to turn this into a beautiful geranium garden what's going to sit under here this is my old barbecue in there but anyway that's going to sit against the barbecue and it's going to be have a, a few different species of uh, geraniums they're really, really Easy to grow guys, all you gotta do is just break off a geranium like here. I'll show you. I'll probably do a video on it, but basically all you gotta do is just snap off a geranium like this and just stick it in the ground. And eventually you'll have beautiful geraniums growing. And there's a bob toll is there too. So yeah, I'm working on that today, guys. It's going to be... That's pretty sad how it's a legal <laughs> bloody rainwater tank. So I can't believe that, you know. It's like vet growing vegetables. Hi there. You're going to have to have a license. So you need to, you know, a license, pay a yearly fee to grow your own vegetables. That's what it's going to be like. I know in America you need a... You can't capture your own rainwater, like in California and stuff. In California, not allowed to capture your own rainwater, but unfortunately, that's the way it's coming, guys. The new world order is coming, so try and get in there, guys, and start growing your own vegetables before they start banning people from growing their own vegetables. It's really, really sad the way the world's going. So, anyway, fellas, before I go, just make sure you don't get any vaccine shots, all right, because I want you guys to understand that. You know, all these vaccine shots are all poison, fellas. They contain aborted baby cells and pig blood, chicken blood, everything. I'm really, it's really true, guys. They really do contain the, the cells of aborted babies. So please refuse your vaccine shots, okay? Especially if they bring in that coronavirus one. So, but anyway, fellas, I really, really appreciate it. I'll keep going to plant these beautiful fruit trees. So, all right, guys, thanks so much for joining. I really, really apologize if I missed comments. It's so hard to capture them when you're walking along, talking, and so forth. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, seeing the bobtail, guys. I'll do another 
better video on removing bobtail ticks when I come across any more ticks in the near future. Alright everyone, thanks so much for joining me and we'll chat soon, okay? So, nothing else to tell you. Just that probably in the next few weeks we'll also be planting more beautiful trees using this seed raising mix. So that's what I love doing guys, is just growing native trees around my area, just going out bush and collecting all the tree seeds and uh, just growing trees. And before I go, fellas, I'll just show you this is all my tree seeds. What I've got up top here. No, that one's a good one. No ticks. It's my outdoor fireplace there, fellas. My pizza oven. And this is where I do all my cooking at the moment. Anyone who's new to watching. Thanks. So I haven't got an a oven at the moment guys, I, my electric oven blew up, so I do all my cooking outside now, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, well I've had about bloody 20 or 30 vaccinations, Carla. So don't ever get them guys, because people died, just in India, you know, 400,000 kids died because of uh, Bill Gates, his vaccination shots and so forth. It's really true guys, 400,000 kids died in India. Reactions due to vaccinations and so forth, and you know, 400,000 died. That's not to mention the millions of others who are affected lifelong disabilities and so forth, fellas. It's really true, just research it, go to YouTube and research it. So, anyway, guys, just before I go, just in here is all my seeds I'm going to be planting very, very shortly, or native West Australian tree seeds and so forth in this big thing and I'll be collecting more as well so that's a beautiful casuarina she oak seed pod there the round one and all the seeds are falling out they're all on the bottom of this big barrel right now big olive oil drum so that's what I'm be doing in the next few weeks guys planting beautiful tree seeds and so forth so but anyway guys, so I'm having a beautiful grilled fish tonight for dinner and probably some deep fried chips. I've been <laughs> having heaps of deep fried chips lately, nice and easy. But uh, yeah, so... Alright guys, really, really appreciate it. And also, there's, I've got a really, really good playlist on my front page of my YouTube channel. It's called Wake Up to the Deception, guys. If you're not aware of it, try and wake up to Flat Earth, fellas. It's so important to try and wake up, guys. Millions and millions of people are waking up to Flat Earth. All right, it's been happening since around 2015. Tens of millions of people know that NASA lies, research Flat Earth. The reason they're hiding the Flat Earth, guys, you know why they're hiding the Flat Earth? They don't want people to know that the Earth is flat. It's because of this. Because God is real. They don't want people to know that God is real, okay? So on my playlist on my front page, guys, I've got an awesome playlist with over 4,000 videos to the Flat Earth, Coronavirus, Hollywood, the Illuminati, fake news, all the celebrities who worship Satan, everything. So please, guys, try and wake up because it's so important, guys, that God is real, you know? I know it's hard that people don't believe in God because we've all been tricked. I'll say it one more time, guys. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the whole world that the that he never existed. So anyway, fellas, I don't want to turn people off, but you know, God really is real, okay? When you come to God, he'll give you a beautiful new heart. When you confess your sins to him, ask God for forgiveness, and the slate will be wiped clean. Okay, because one day we're all going to meet, meet him, fellas. We're all going to stand in front of God naked. And uh, they're going to read that book of life out with all of our awful, filthy deeds, all the awful things that we've thought, all the awful things that we've done. So please, guys, try and wake up. God really is real, okay? All right, fellas and guys and girls, thank you so much for watching. And I'll keep on going, go and plant these beautiful fruit trees. 
and uh, I'll do a video, another video, probably tomorrow, guys. And sorry for saying guys well, so much, fellas. The reason I say guys so much is because of uh, reading all the stupid comics when I was a kid. Archie comics. Remember the old Archie comics? Archie and Jughead. I think Jughead used to say guys all the time, and that's how I picked it up. <laughs> all right, everyone. We'll chat soon. Here are the beautiful bees. Thanks, Carla. Good to see that you're awake. Wake up. See you guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And don't think I'm crazy. I'm not. You know, everything I've told you guys in the last four weeks is true. I'm not lying, fellas. All right. We'll chat soon, everyone. Thank you. It's so hard for me to smile, fellas. My whole life's been... You know, you know what I mean. It's if only you knew what's happened to me, fellas. I'd lost my smile many, many years ago. But I love you all, alright? So see you guys. And I've got all my teeth. <laughs> see you everyone. Bye.